Now, the Northern Ireland Secretary has been forced to clarify comments that killings by the security forces during the troubles in Northern Ireland were not crimes. Sinn Féin described her words as offensive and hurtful, and there are calls for her to resign. Ms Bradley later issued a statement saying if there is evidence of wrongdoing, it should always be investigated. The families of the Bloody Sunday victims are currently waiting to hear where the soldiers involved will be prosecuted. Over 90% of the killings during the Troubles were at the hands of terrorists. Every single one of those was a crime. The, the fewer than 10% that were at the hands of the military and the police were not crimes. They were people acting under orders and under instruction and, and fulfilling their duties in a dignified and appropriate way. I'm joined now by Mick Fealty, who edits Northern Ireland's best-known political website, Slugger O'Toole. Good to talk to you, Mr Fealty. Um, what did you make of it when you, when you heard that uh, from the Northern Ireland Secretary in the House of Commons today? Look, it, it doesn't take much to get the ire of Northern Irish politicians going. And actually, if you look back at all Secretaries of State, very few of them have been, have been popular with everyone. But I'm afraid Ms Bradley's comments today angered one half of the community and completely embarrassed the other half. You know, the truth is that members of the security forces that conducted them pro themselves properly under fire also take offence at this idea that they, their activities and their courage and bravery throughout that whole struggle uh, is besmirched by what her, the former Prime Minister David Cameron has already uh, told the people of Derry uh, was outrageous uh, uh, and an egregious act on behalf of uh, the, para the Parachute Regiment. Yeah, I mean, David Cameron uh, apologised, didn't he, in the House of Commons, one of the most uh, memorable moments of his premiership. There was also uh, a, an apology issued, wasn't there, by uh, the Ministry of Defence to the family of, of a young girl, Magella O'Hare, who was uh, shot in the back uh, on the border back in 1976. Surely she must have been aware of those cases. Well, either it was huge naivety on her part, um, or she's tragically misinformed, or... She's just simply plain careless with her own brief. And this is a brief that is incredibly important, not just because of Brexit, but because the, the legacy of the Troubles has become a waking nightmare. And it's a huge quagmire for all, uh, all political actors. The truth is, because we haven't had democracy for two years, um, it, it, there is no way that people in Northern Ireland or the politicians of Northern Ireland have of handling this. So very, there's a huge amount of responsibility goes directly onto the, the shoulders of the Northern Ireland office. And it has to be handled not only responsibly, but in a way in which there can be a proper outcome here. And the, the truth is that the Secretary of State is responding to internal pressures, both from within her political party, but also from uh, representatives of the security forces who, who really don't want to see these septuagenarian and octogenarian men dragged into a jury. But there, there isn't really any credible way in which you can um, create a kind of an amnesty situation, either one without granting it to everyone, which includes um, uh, the terrorists, if you like, or the, the, the freedom fighters, depending on which, which way you look at it, but who are, are, do account for nearly 90% of all the, uh, the killings during the Troubles. Oh, oh, and the other, pro the other problem is that you run into denying relatives justice that they are entitled to under uh, the Human Rights Charter, Article 2. But it is that issue of the statistics, as, uh, as the Secretary of State pointed out, and you just reinforced that 90 per cent of the killings during the Troubles were carried out by paramilitaries from different sides and uh, 300 or so by British forces. But, but the investigations seem to disproportionately focus on the actions of the British state. And there are so many of those killings by the paramilitaries to which there'll be no resolution. Well, a, 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 a victims activist on Northern Ireland Network tele, Television um, last Thursday pointed out that so, something like 95% uh, of all the unsolved killings within um, South East Fermanagh were, were the result of the activities of the provisional IRA. The, the state is not set up to investigate anti-state actors or even loyalist parliament, parliament, paramilitaries who claimed at the time that they were killing mostly innocent Catholics, but quite a few Protestants as well, uh, that they were somehow 
acting in support of the state. These two separate sets of people who do account for 90% of all the deaths, the state has no way of investigate, investigating them. The only active investigations that are taking place at the, at the moment are into the security forces and more particularly into the police. And that is very debilitating, not simply for those veterans who feel that they serve uh, properly uh, under fire very often, uh, but also for the confidence of people going forward, trying to get young Catholics to come into a police force when the reputation of uh, a previous force from some 30 or 40 years ago is being dragged through the uh, dragged through the mire. Okay, Mr. Fealty, thank you very much indeed. Uh, good to talk to you, Mick Fealty. Then.